Anyway, um, enough about my life updates and probably more about topics and stuff. Before I jump into it, topics actually, I just started. Um, I watched the first episode of Surviving R. Kelly. Just, uh, I think yeah, yesterday night, and yeah, wow, man. Um, a lot's been said about R. Kelly. I think um, everyone's kind of familiar with the case of Raw, but it's been it's been quite a peculiar one for me because I kind of grew up knowing what had happened right i think that it might have happened when i was maybe in secondary school the whole like p tape thing and the whole marrying Aaliyah before that blah 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 you heard of all these things about him and obviously the really the extremely lewd r&b songs all that malarkey but for the most part if you're an r&b head especially me growing up when i was younger i used to love listening to r&b right um back in the day when entertainment crew used to play on the uh, deja vu and they used to always have like an r&b set an r&b kind of hour and a half to two during the end of it and another dude too used to play r&b i forgot on deja vu i forgot his name a couple of other dudes used to play r&b but r&b was a big thing for me i used to make mix it so i wasn't really that um protrude by the whole lewd language thing but i do remember whenever you played you know r kelly type stuff or whatever it may be katie and jojo black street out loud in your house sometimes your mum would maybe sometimes have some things to say in it number one she had questions about whether, what girl you were seeing right and making sure they weren't jamaican or some shit right <laughs> and then number two um making sure that you turned down because this guy was talking about you know i don't know madness on the flipping r&b song but what always kind of intrigued me and i, I never really dug into to find out what what happened was why it seemed like every you know before social media came before social media there was really a thing r kelly was always accused of these things right always accused of some kind of you know lewd sexual act against women but nothing ever seemed to happen you know albums kept coming out he kept performing he kept touring and nothing nothing seemed to happen it just seemed to be like a constant you know thing that happened so someone would accuse him and he just couldn't he just sweeps under the rug or everyone kind of forgets about it after i don't know a couple of weeks or so and this was before social media but still i remember there was a lot of traffic around his name regarding the things that he might have done or not have done right allegedly done that might have been in the industry and i always used to think like how is it that he just like completely got away with this like what's happened here right and obviously over the years i've gotten a little bit more educated and kind of you've seen different cases come up whether it's the harvey weinstein thing um whether it's the things happen with bill cosby whether it's the stuff that's happened with judge kavanaugh in america um loads of other cases you're starting to get a little bit more familiar with what's happening and you start to realize that it's quite difficult especially when these things are said after the fact right to kind of convict somebody on allegations based primarily on he says she said right um so then i understood then why you know there's there's kind of stats out there that say you know the conviction rate for uh rape is surprisingly low and also the women that come are, that the women that are prepared to kind of testify or subject themselves to rape kits is comp- comparably low too that gone through that experience because you know there's so much kind of risk um associated with it and you know the pain associated with going through that experience and try having to relive it in order to kind of seek justice blah blah loads of things the system that are deficient that kind of make that kind of inadvertently um make it so those kind of things happen quite often because there's not that much of a deterrent and even more so even worse so probably with celebrities right because they feel like they're untouchable for the most part right um you you rise to lofty ranks you get you work all your way up into a, a position of power and some celebrities not all but some celebrities feel it as a point um feel their obligation to kind of you know enact, enact revenge on those that kind of spurned them um when they were coming up right they use it as a platform then to kind of be the nasty person right it's sort of similar to remember that black mirror episode where that geeky guy at work who gets bullied and stuff when he goes into the game he he then becomes the you know the the, the kind of tyrannical boss right he kind of takes a piss out of everybody he turns people into different things and like, he makes the woman make, make sure she can't speak she doesn't have a mouth and whatever he starts to he he does all the stuff that the bullies did to him back to other people right so sexual sometimes assault especially with um celebrities it kind of sometimes feels like they do the same thing it's that it's, it's in that kind of realm right there it's like a weird sort of get back right but of course the victims in it um no you know this isn't a music matter for the victims involved because they're having to live with this experience like you know for years and years and years until maybe the day that they die especially if the person doesn't come to justice but obviously over the years with the whole rise of the whole um, me too movement and believing the accusers and extra kind of uh, eyes being paid attention to other cases that have happened you know it's been come to our attention again that these things are still out there and r kelly again another story came out that he was supposed to be have run in a sex cult that girls were being held under their un, uh against their will or under duress and parents hadn't seen their daughters in two and a half years whatever it may be and then we came to thinking like this guy's still at it right so i think there's been a concerned effort within the industry thankfully 
to kind of like sudden eventually put an end to it right okay this is enough like we need to everyone to be aware and then if you decide to do business with him again then it's up to you but everyone needs to be aware of what's going on and it and it to me it seems like the best form of social justice because sometimes with social justice it seems like they want to end your career want to make sure you don't you don't eat again you don't do anything in life blah 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 right which seems that sometimes can seem a little bit harsh especially when you when you especially when you compare it to the crime but in R. Kelly's case, considering what he's kind of done and he's kind of reckless abandoned and uh, he's he's kind of, I don't know if you call it confidence, but his lack of like, you know, regret at his actions. He hasn't tried to make amends. But like he's, he seems as if like he's just going on as if nothing, it's just not that big of a deal, right? And of course, you know, for some women out there, it's been even more disturbing to see videos of him in concerts with women kind of wiping down his tongue as he's performing and touching him up and still kind of lording over him when he's got all these mad things hovering over his head. So finally, you know, I guess everyone kind of banded together and they decided to release this um, documentary called Surviving R. Kelly, which is on Lifetime now. And I'm sure if you're not, if you're not in the US and you're in the UK, you'll be able to find it in all your usual <laughs> illegal um, streaming platforms, right? But... um. This documentary, I watched episode one the other day, last night actually, and wow, man. Again, a reminder of just how important it is for everyone to watch the documentary and again for everyone to make their mind up. I'm not saying he should go to prison, I'm not saying he should kind of run underneath for prison, um, uh, whatever it may be, but I think everyone needs to be made aware of his actions and then whoever don't wants to do business with him, whoever wants to book him, promote his shows, release his album, distribute his singles, it's up to you. But everyone needs to be made aware of what's going on because this guy has been getting away with murder for ages, bro. The stuff with Re Aaliyah, which I forgot about when, you know, because obviously I was super young when that happened, but it kind of reminded me of everything that happened at that time. It's interesting because nowadays, especially in hip hop or in the scene in general, the age thing doesn't carry as much as a taboo as it used to. I remember it being a big deal back in the day. Big, big, big deal. I remember even in my school, one boy in my school kind of like um, dealt with this girl who was kind of regarded as the most prettiest girl in our school in our secondary school and um what secondary school is what age 15 to 16 right 15 to, no 13 to 16 sorry about that right yeah um what was it 12 it should be 12 right because there's five years or 12 it should be 12 right 12 to 16 so it might, oh, that's not even 12 years what how many years is it 11 you go to secondary school when you're 11 years old i guess so wherever it is anyway um the girl in year seven was regarded as the most prettiest girl in the school and obviously the 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 boy we were in year nine or ten no year nine year nine they say yeah we're in year nine we're in year nine at that time and she was in year seven but obviously if you're in secondary school and you're a kid right year nine is what you're what 13 maybe a 10 year old is like they might as well be a five year old to you if you're 13 really in it because you're just you know you're hitting your kind of puberty sort of like bumps coming up right you're into different things you recognize girls as like not as sexual beings but like as a gender different to you right the last thing you want to do is hang around with a girl let, let alone a girl that's like you know in year seven right year seven's got a big taboo around it because these guys just come out of primary school right they're trying to you know flex their muscle but for the most part these kids are just kids for the most part so I remember that being a thing in our school. Like this, this kid in year nine was going to this year, a girl in year seven, and it was a big problem, big big deal. And then they they, they continued going out of each other when he was in year ten and she was in year eight. And then it, it was a kind of a big thing that he kind of just decided, you know, what, fuck it, I like this girl, we're gonna we're gonna do it. And they just didn't care. And I guess them not caring, kind of like let people like you know they stopped kind of talking about it at the time. But it was a big deal. Like it was a situation like, yo, you are a creep, you're a perv. Like how can you be good going out of a girl that young? So I remember when the Arcadia Leah thing came out, it was also a big deal because, of course, she was 27. She was 15 at the time. So what the fuck is going on here, man? This is nuts. But it seems as if nowadays in hip hop, it's not that big of a deal. It seems as if there's a lot of guys who are, let's say, of course, if I guess the argument is that if they're of age, then it doesn't matter. Right. But I don't know, man. Like, even if even if you're even if even if the girl's banging, like, would you really want to date an 18 year old when you're 27? like no knowing how you were 18 knowing how girls are at 18 or knowing the kind of girl that would be in the industry at 18 um wanting to hang around a 27 year old right because you know there might be an 18 year old woman out there who would be a great fit for a 27 year old man but you know she's not the kind of person that's kind of be hanging around in studios you know and sort of like hanging after i don't know it's a different kind of person 
and in general anyway it just seems weird to me overall right um i was never the kind of person that had like friends in loads of different year sets i might i might have had a few friends in the year below and maybe the year just below that if they were like my brother's friends and stuff but i didn't really hang around with a you know because i guess it's different if you're one of those kids that you grew up you went into a school where you had friends in different year groups whatever but i never really had that i had maybe two fr two friends in that were in sixth form maybe two that i knew that were sixth form or college that get came back and and, and told me stories how they go to a school where you don't have to wear uniform it's like oh, and you go in how you go in is that like you scan your card in the front of a gate that was it but for the most part all my friends are in my year so to i can't even imagine what dating a girl you know let alone a girl two years younger than you imagine fucking 10 12 13 15 it's like fucking hell these guys are absolutely nuts but again watching a documentary it brings it all to light it reminds you of that situation and just you know regardless of what you believe is right or right or not like just seeing the amount of broken it's it's just, it's just it just it just go it just went it just reminded me of how many people are affected by the actions of one person you know inadvertently like the amount of broken people he's left behind in his trail of course they're not broken they're survivors they're prospering they're really brave to step out there and, and display their story and tell their truth but you know the amount of damage he's caused through his own selfishness is just abhorrent really isn't it really think about it you don't really it's like something that you can't really wrap your head around like just being so selfish in your own head wanting you know and preying upon these, you know, young, impressionable young ladies in the industry who just want to get on and stuff. And, you know, again, and the whole getting on thing. I think there's a, you hear some, a couple of girls in the documentary say something along the lines of, ah, oh, we want to be stars, right? Um, um, you hear a lot of girls in the documentary or women say in the documentary, or their friends told them, hey, this is your big chance. Now, the girls and their friends aren't telling them, hey, this is your big chance. Do whatever you got to do to get your get the role. But there is an understanding that, you know, part of the reason why you're in the room is because you're a pretty girl, right? They're kind of using, you know, the fact that you're pretty and you're young and you can sing as a means to kind of propel to propel your career in the hope that you'd maybe community you may be connected with other young, pretty people out there. It's natural. It's normal. It happens all the time. No problem. But to kind of take that and then spin it as some sort of um, invitation for you to like sexually assault or to make sexual advances to girls who are super impressionable, right? People who shouldn't even be in that kind of position, who shouldn't be um, sexually um, active in that way at all, right? Maybe sexually active in a way of like, you know, dating somebody your, your age, but then they shouldn't be sexually active at all in the way of like understanding what uh, what what power they have as, as a woman and what and what their sexuality and, and how they can use their sexuality for their own means. Like that shouldn't be anything that should tell what a 16 or 15 year old girl should be having in their head at all. Zero at all. It should just be a thing of like, okay, this guy wants me in a room because obviously he thinks I'm pretty and I can sing well, but that's it. Like we can all recognize, right? The girl's pretty. It's not, you don't need to prey on it. You can just say, she, you got a look about you that I'm sure a lot of kids out there are going to like, especially young girls, especially young boys. We're going to promote you. We're going to put in the studio and make sure you record something and put it out there, but not prey on them and kind of take advantage. That's the thing that really disgusted me about the whole documentary. And again, like I said, regardless of what you think he did or didn't do, like that aspect of it is just like nasty absolutely nasty and there's not many people that kind of have had a good word to say about him not that that matters because you know people in the industry especially in hollywood have probably the backbone of a fucking boneless chicken for the most part but you know no one's really coming out and fighting for his defense right people have come out and kind of said what they have to say the ones that don't want to get involved and not get involved which again i don't have any problem with i saw john legend made a tweet the other day talking about how he didn't think it was a big deal that he went and um what do you say you said something along the lines of like he uh he made a comment on, on um the other day insinuating that he was he wasn't brave for stepping out that he, he did it because obviously um r kelly is a is a creep because i think he's one of the only dudes that's in the documentary outside of his family that have kind of like you know oh outside of his kind of immediate circle that have kind of you know saying stuff about him especially considering the amount of people that worked with him in the industry is it something that i kind of thought was a little bit disingenuous because again you're not you know you don't know everyone's situation you're not you know what i mean everyone's got different ways of dealing with things and stuff and sometimes I don't, and sometimes I'm not a believer that people's silence is like an, an, an you know, an indication that they agree or they co-sign someone's behavior. It just might mean they just don't want to get involved. Some people just don't want to get involved, and I think people should be allowed to not be not be involved. But um, Joe Legend kind of tweeted this the other day, which kind of you know made people talk in in, in the scene overall. He tweeted uh, to everyone telling me how courageous I am for appearing on the documentary, which I mentioned, uh, surviving R. Kelly. It didn't feel risky at all. I believe these women and don't give a fuck about protecting a serial child rapist. Easy decision, which is fine, right? He's allowed to make that decision and that's more than happy of him to do that. But I don't think the suggestion that, you know, others are not coming out because, you know, 
they don't get they don't give a fuck about it it's true because some people just don't want to get involved it's too messy because again as we saw with the kevin hart situation and other things have happened sometimes you step in front and some of these people out here these social justice warriors are not are not content with this happening they want more drama to be associated with it, more takedown so you step out of it and then they start digging into your past and and re-releasing stuff and rehashing interviews and stuff that you said in the past and in an effort to kind of bring you down which i think is just abhorrent and disgusting we've got we've got the target we've got someone that needs to be taught a lesson that needs to be applied to the industry overall right something that needs to be known like hey this is not cool we don't we don't approve of this and then kind of everyone can kind of go about their their life and hopefully rebuild from the point you know of, of disaster that they've kind of been through but i don't think everyone needs to get involved i don't think that's everyone's place because you know sometimes we've all been there man we've seen people talk in front of cameras about big issues and we've kind of been ish- annoyed because we felt like they've done more harm than good because they don't really know what they're talking about that's you know that happens because so, like, they don't have the information they're not very skilled that may be speaking whatever it may be but and again some if you're invested and you give a fuck and you want to get involved get involved but if you don't don't get involved but it doesn't necessarily mean you're you know you're complicit in it or you're co-signing his behavior that's not true whatsoever but again like i said i, I re- highly recommend documentary i highly recommend you check it out it's called surviving r kelly it's on it's on now on lifetime if you're in the u.s but if you're based anywhere else you'll be able to find it anywhere else on every streaming wherever else you watch however else you watch things in general you should be able to find it on there and i'm sure clips will be floating about but i recommend you check it out so far i think it's two episodes i'm not sure how long it's going to be but i recommend you check it out surviving r kelly is out now uh 